Today we're going to put together then test this Ameribraid fast back tilting 2x72 belt grinder. If you want to skip around the video, check the description for some timestamps. In short, it's got some fantastic features that put it at the top of its class and make it a terrific value, but it's not without some drawbacks, so stay tuned for more on that. Full disclosure, I paid regular price for this minus 10% with an agreement that I'd provide an honest video review. Thankfully, Ameribraid has a full assembly video on their website and YouTube. Just queue it up on your phone while you're putting this together. It was much easier to put together than I thought it would be. The truth is, some of you guys can probably do this without instructions. They do provide a toolkit and all the wrenches you need. It took me about an hour and 15 minutes. If I had to do it again, I think it would probably go over in about 45 minutes or so. Putting together the pedestal is first, and these are the casters that go with it. It's a great feature, but it costs extra, so keep that in mind. You can get regular feet or leveling casters for it. Having a rolling pedestal is a big plus for me. It reduces clutter, makes my machine mobile, and gives it extra versatility and a small footprint in my pretty small shop. As seen here, the Fastback chassis comes assembled, essentially, and pre-painted or, or powder-coated, unlike other grinders in this class, and I really appreciated that. To some of you, that won't matter, but to me, it was sort of a big deal. One of the main reasons I'm getting a new grinder is to get something that will tilt horizontal. And there's some options that you can use to make your existing grinder tilt horizontally, but with all the other bells and whistles and cool things with the Ameribraid system, I decided just to go ahead and upgrade and spend the money. The VFD that comes with this unit is top of the line and it's pre-wired. So that's sort of a big deal for me too. It contains forward and reverse options. I don't really care about reverse. I can't anticipate that I'm going to use it very much. They sell single speed versions if you don't want a VFD. My honest advice is to save up for a VFD. This motor option is their 2 horsepower WEG wired for 220 volts. Currently, Ameribraid offers 1 and 1.5 horsepower at 110 or 2 and 3 horsepower in 220 volt. You'll notice they include an indexing tool to set up the drive wheel in just the right spot on the motor spindle for tracking. It's pretty handy. We'll talk about my particular motor choice down the road when we test it out. Their platen here has a rubberized wheel on the bottom you can use for grinding. It's pretty handy. And notice that I'm probably spending less than five minutes getting the tracking on on this new construction grinder. It's really nice. It's very easy to adjust the tracking. Oh, this music makes me feel like I gotta talk fast. Uh, the small wheel, I'm just, uh, we missed the small wheel attachment. It was extra and pretty cool small wheels. I'm very excited to have that. We'll look at that more later. Look at this huge work rest. This is pretty cool too. I think this was extra, this size work rest. I think this was extra at any rate. Finally, we have their water bucket. That's a pretty brilliant attachment to go with this pedestal. Very cool. Well, the music and the time-lapse photography made that look exhausting, but it wasn't. So here's a quick recap of the grinder and some of its features, and I'm going to highlight what drew me to this specific grinder. Pre-assembled and powder-coated, pre-wired tilting frame, the pedestal and the casters, and it has the, the platen with the rubber wheel. I'm a big fan of the mobility of this pedestal, but it's not all gravy. These leveling casters are pretty cool. They level very easily by rotating this orange knob. You can push the pad in here up and down and lift the wheel off the ground. Uh, they're very nice. Unfortunately, the only way to lock the wheel in place is to extend the pad until the wheel's off the ground. There's no lever or switch or anything you can press to lock the wheels and then just instantly unlock them and roll. And so I, I don't think that's too cool. Okay, so another little nitpicky thing is the drive wheel sort of right here, the sparks come straight down. The two legs, front legs of the stand won't really allow my dust collection bucket to get directly under the wheel. It's off a little bit. And so I have to sort of scoot this over to get right under the wheel and back far enough. It's just gonna take some adjustment, but it's not that big a deal. Again, this is nitpicking. I think what they should do is make an attachment like this with the dust collector um, thing that comes out here. That'd be, man, I'm, I'm confident people would pay for that. This work rest is so much roomier than my last work rest. It's adjustable up and down. And if you move it to its lowest setting, you can set it instantly indexed at 90 degrees to the platen using this set screw as a guide. So you just 
you know, put a 90 degree angle on there or a one, two, three block or something. And then you adjust this screw up and down until it's 90 degrees. It's very nice. From there, you can keep the work rest in the same spot and just adjust the platen to slightly alter grinding angles if you want to, and then go back. That's not something Ameribrade endorses. It's just something I've noticed. Hopefully that doesn't wreck your uh, drive somehow. As you can see, when you tilt it horizontally, you have to replace the work rest arm in the chassis after turning it 90 degrees and then flip it upside down. Another thing I'm already liking is these big aluminum lockdown wheels. They're lightweight, they turn easily, the radius is long enough that they have some torque on them without much effort and they lock and unlock and um, everything's just smooth and um, it's clearly designed ergonomically and I, I'm just really enjoying that right now. Mm, thank you, Steve. Let's crank it up and Steve what happens. One of the things I'm already noticing is how dead on this tracking is. It's really amazing. I mean, it's just rock solid. It doesn't drift with pressure. It doesn't wobble. My last belt grinder, you know, you couldn't adjust the platen wheels in and out. Um, and it wasn't nearly the stable. Part of it was my fault. I let the crown on the tracking wheel wear down over six or seven years. And so that could be replaced. But even in its heyday, it wasn't like this. I mean, this just runs dead straight. Except when you go from forward to reverse, you have to adjust the tracking wheel a little bit here by about half an inch or so. I bet with some tweaking, you know, I could get that worked down, maybe worked out entirely, but it's just not that important to me. You know, I'm not going to use reverse and it's so dead on going forward. I'm just going to leave things the way they are for now. All right, this is the platen. It comes with this uh, hardened steel backing and then a plate that's replaceable on the front of that. They bolt to the tooling arm back here with these two bolts. Um, mine's a mild steel plate. They were out of hardened steel, so they, they sent me the mild steel, hardened steel plates on the way. I'm not sure it matters much because I've put some double-sided tape on the front of that and then mounted a ceramic glass uh, platen on that. There's a shelf down here that I've welded on here to accommodate the platen. Redbeard Ops does a video on how to make this type of modification to a grinder if you're interested. They also sell shelves that you can bolt on from the back to accommodate a ceramic platen. Uh, there's lots of different things. I'm not recommending anything. This isn't a tutorial. You do this type of thing at your own risk. If this platen breaks free, the shards could fly at you and it's obviously a dangerous setup. The platen is adjustable, you know, side to side like this, and it can also go front and back, obviously. So you can be flush with the guide wheels, recessed or proud of them. I put them a little bit proud, which is why I'm glad I found this platen with rounded edges on top. They don't all come with rounded edges. At any rate, that's that. Um, I'm pretty happy with this tooling arm. They're making a platen chiller of some kind, a cooler. I'm sort of anxious to see what that's going to be like. All right, we're in the horizontal position. Woot, woot. Let's check the small wheel attachment. This is where I used to do that work. It's not that I'm not thankful for the, for the drum sander, and it's not that it doesn't work, but you can only get aluminum oxide for these drum sanders, and that grit wears very quickly. It's very expensive and there's no way, you know, it doesn't grind down here perfectly level because everything falls off. And so to have this horizontal flip with the small wheel attachment, I mean, that's just, that is, I can't describe what a game changer that is for knife making for me. So this is a quarter inch steel. This is sort of a half used belt. I think it's probably half to two thirds the way through its life cycle, but I didn't want to use a sharp belt because then everyone's like, oh, it's the belt, I uh, can't tell because the belts are sharp, blah, blah, blah. At any rate, it's a used belt, so it's not at its peak performance. This is unhardened uh, high carbon steel, this is 1095.
All right, so what gives? I can hear this two horsepower motor at 220 volts slowing with work that my old two horsepower motor at 110 volts, or roughly one and a half horsepower, probably wouldn't have balked much at. Hmm. At first, I thought, well, the bulk and resistance of this rubber contact wheel at the base of the platen is just harder to turn than the two inch aluminum wheel on my old grinder's platen. Then I thought, no, maybe it's the drive wheel in the back that weighs more than my older one, and that's sort of slowing things down. I mean, when you turn the motor off, it just sounds like there's more resistance in this belt circuit, right? So it turns out, no. According to Eric at Ameribraid, that is the sound of the DC motor brake in the VFD. So we'll have to look for some more clues. Listen to my reaction when turning on the grinder for the very first time. It's like I could feel the wind in my hair, and I thought that that was really just the extra power or torque. Oh my god. So I marked my drive wheel with purple marker and then filmed it at 240 frames per second and played it back frame by frame on my video editing software. And it only takes four frames for one rotation. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So given the frame rate of my camera, if each rotation takes four frames, then the calculations show my motor is running at 3600 RPM. Now had I simply read Ameribraid's website a little closer, I would have figured that out because they say as much. Their motors are double clocked at 3600 RPM with the VFD, and I wouldn't have had to do this fancy math. But how is a 1745 RPM motor turning at 3600 RPM? Eric at Ameribraid confirms that the motor's base RPM rating is at 60 hertz on three phase and that the VFD is capable of 120 hertz output, which doubles the motor speed. I'm guessing that's what this J4 jumper does. You can see in my VFD, it's been placed on the 2X setting. The problem is that when the power stays the same, twice the RPM means one half the torque. Ameribraid says they use a four pole motor for better torque at lower speeds and that the science says a faster belt speed is more important for faster material removal than more pressure with higher torque. Eric notes speeding up the motors is standard practice in the grinder world and the construction of the motor can handle that extra speed. So let's go ahead and turn my VFD down to 75%, slow my motor down a little bit and see what happens. Despite leaning full force into the platen, the belt doesn't slow, so profiling looks like it's going to just hang in there at this speed. I can't really stop the belt. You can hear now that I've turned it up a bit. It's at 85%. Let's put this ADC RV2 full flat against the belt and see what happens. I think you heard that it slowed a bit. So I'm going to turn the VFD back down to 75%. We'll put the steel back on the belt and see if it, if it slows down at all. It's really interesting, just turning the VFD down 10% means it doesn't bog down anymore. And that's certainly more surface area than I typically grind and I'm pressing quite hard on it, so I'm fairly impressed with that. Slowing the speed basically improves the torque such that it's virtually unstoppable. I mean, slow motion footage I took of the drive wheel for this test shows the motor was turning at 3000 RPM or 5500 surface feet per minute. You know, the truth is I can still run this motor at 3600 RPM and grind a knife without significant slowdown if I want to. If uh, taking it to 3000 RPM means it's virtually unstoppable and I can dial speeds in anywhere in between that, then I'm plenty happy with a 2 horsepower, 220 volt uh, motor. I don't see any need to step up to 3 horsepower. Remember, in all of this, you also have to contend with heat. I mean, does it really matter how fast your belt is spinning or how much pressure you can apply before blocking down if in either case your work gets so hot that it burns up? You know, I don't know. Eric at Ameriblade did offer to change the motors out in VFD if I wasn't happy with the performance on this one, but it's so superior to my 2 horsepower 110 volt motor now that I figured it out that uh, I would never do that. All right, I've used this on about a dozen projects so far, and I'm going to break down the pros and cons. Pros first. Chassis comes assembled and powder coated out of the box. It's a big deal to me. State of the art. K back a variable speed drive with forward and reverse that is pre-wired. Another big deal to me. Simple, smooth, horizontal tilting. The main reason I purchased this grinder. Easy to dial in tracking with large ergonomic wheel grips. Space saving mobile pedestal with casters, you know, BYO casters. Rubber contact wheel on the platen for grinding on the fly. Love it. So it's a just it shows some thought. 
huge indexing work rest, a nice selection of accessories, small wheel attachment, contact wheels, surface grinders are available. Might we see a pedestal attachment for dust collection in the future? Cons? Uh, you asked for it. Con, you bloodsucker. You're going to have to do your own dirty work now. Do you hear me? Do you? It's my Shatner. Cons, this belt grinder generates more heat because it does more work than my last grinder. I didn't take that into account. I'm going to have to do something with that extra heat. I'll either try to fabricate something that I find online or wait for a mirror braid to come up with their own cooler. Next, these leveling casters. They're just not it. I suggest standard locking casters instead of these particular leveling casters, which cost extra. So just save your money. Go to Home Depot if you agree. Next, the two inch square tooling arm is larger than most other grinders tooling arms. So if you're switching brands, some of your old accessories may or may not fit with your new grinder. Lastly, the water bucket needs to be deeper. And that's about it. It's a great machine overall. I'm really, really happy with it. It's less expensive with more features than its competitors. It's made in the USA. I've had great customer service. And aside from nitpicking a few things, I really could not be happier. So that's it guys, have a good one.